Hi. This is the incredible reality of digital humans. Digital humans will revolutionize industries from customer service to advertising and gaming. The possibilities for digital humans are endless. Welcome everyone to your channel, AI Fun Fact for All. For those of you who are new to this channel, my name is Pedro Magan, I have a PhD in computer science, and I have extensive knowledge in AI and machine learning. And in this channel, we talk about AI and how it can use and shape our life. In this video, we want to see the future of AI and AI agents, and how is that going to change our effect and our everyday life, from the speak of uh, some of the well-knowns like Sam Altman, and uh, see that what we can expect from it, and what do we think about it, how we can get prepared from it. You might notice that the location is different, because I'm actually on a trip for my IRS conference and I'm currently in Dubai Marina and I'm taking this video uh, after joining the conference uh, from AI and Robotics so this is going to be an interesting video without further ado let's jump right into it. In the first part I want to talk about a company called Altera and how they use GPT-40 in order to create human collaboration. It's actually very fascinating so let's uh, take a deep dive into uh, the different application and what we can expect from the future of it. So as you can see in 2023 OpenAI large language model uh, broadly was available and Yang actually quit his job as an assistant professor in MIT and joined the, to start Altera, um, a research lab that is working on digital humans. So a new way that people interact with each other as an agent for fundamental human quantities. So this is the whole concept of how this Altera actually happens. And they are trying to somehow mimic the behavior of human. And this is actually going to be very useful in a scenario where you want to do some A-B testing or you want to uh, basically see that what uh, version of something is going to be good or what's going to be an implication of deploying something in policy and so on uh, without actually needing to uh, replicate this. In that case, you're going to deploy it on these simulators, which is going to be a good replication of what a human would do. So as you can see in this uh, diagram, we have the thing part and the memory part, the main components that are inspired from the human brain neurons. And then we have, of course, different things such as the needs, personality, and mood. So all of these quantities are actually interacting with each other and then we have like goals and then how to update the goal and then we have uh, some of the memory which is like uh, working memory, social memory, short-term memory, long-term memory and then uh, how they are going to summarize to actually create the different uh, goal updates and different tasks that we want to accomplish. Uh, so this is the general uh, AI model that they have uh, developed and how it's going to be useful is that for example us as uh, uh, YouTubers what we do is that we try to look at a different version of the time and we want to choose the one that actually works best. So we're going to do a little bit of testing and see that, okay, which one actually is better. But later on, I believe what is going to happen is that you're going to ask these agents to actually do the test and try to look at it from a cognitive of human and then propose, it, for example, a thumbnail that actually work from a human perspective that, for example, maximize the watch time or, for example, kill to rate. So you're going to maximize something that before was very complex to model, let alone the optimization. But of course, there is one challenge for this. When you have a completely autonomous way of interacting and then you have like different agents that are working to each other, uh, there would be something called a data degradation or long-term autonomy issues. And so this problem actually arises from a simpler version when you have, for example, an autoregressive model and then you will have something called a, a sum up error when you try to predict an output and use that prediction as the input and fed it to the uh, network and then try to predict the next step which is called uh, autoregressive function. So this autoregressive function um, may behave uh, some divergence because they are predicting or the values that they get at each current um, is basically the prediction from the previous step. And as this prediction goes long and we have a, a longer horizon, the divergence from the prediction actual value can be larger. So this actually happens the same here. So AI just interact with the world and then making the decision in real time. But when they their own output become the future output in an uh, autoregressive architecture, the quality uh, degrades over time. Uh, so they said that this is the most AI uh, problem, and then we have uh, for the digital humans, for uh, the ones that we said, the mimicking of the human cognitive behaviors. Other type of agents are basically the agents that are used inside the gaming. Uh, right now we have lots of games that are integrated with AI and they are working uh, with the humans, um, and then we have lots of uh, different bots that are actually AI and completely interacting 
something uh, human-like. And then there's also another version, which is basically uh, creating a personalization of a gamer. So for example, the way uh, that a gamer will uh, interact in a different game will be captured and then will be create a clone of that person inside the game. That would be another application. And then we also obviously have uh, some other ways which you can basically create a scenario that you can interact with all uh, other AI agents. One reason I'm concerning here would be how we can differentiate between the humans and AIs in this case. And, and that's not necessarily for gaming. It's going to be a lot for lots of other cases when you have lots of different AIs that are working uh, collaboratively with human or with each other. So that's very uh, recently actually Sam Altman uh, introduced the word coin, which is basically a way that will uh, create and generate a specific ID uh, for each of the agents and uh, there would be some authentication that will try to separate different entities that are human uh, from the other entities uh, that are AI. So this will create a safe and a robust environment for interaction of real agents and basically uh, real human. Uh, and this work on actually uh, is the first way uh, of uh, proposing a way that these different entities are actually uh, connected to each other. So it's going to uh, be very similar to the content of uh, Bitcoin that uh, uses different uh, wallets to share uh, a decentralized way of uh, connecting different uh, and, uh, and creating different transactions. Mm, the Worldcoin actually tries to provide a unique ID that uh, can be authenticated uh, within different applications, uh, including the vision, voice, uh, audio, and so on, uh, to try to uh, find a uh, a specific entity as a recognizable human and then the other ones uh, to be a specific bots or AI. On the next one, I want to show you a demo from OpenAI that they actually uh, propose something very fascinating which uh, try to use a voice uh, that, that try to actually um, do an ordering from uh, an event. So this is definitely going to be a recent future. So they said that probably in 2025 um, this is going to be actually something that people are interacting with. So let's take a look at the demo together. Hey, your mind strawberries looks really fantastic. Uh, could you place a call and see if you could get us 400 strawberries delivered to the venue? But please keep that under $1,500. I'm on it. We'll get those strawberries delivered for you. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, we have chocolate, vanilla, and we have peanut butter. Wait, how much would 400 chocolate covered? 400? Are you sure you want 400? Yeah, 400 chocolate covered strawberries. How much would that be? I think that'll be around like $1,415.92. Awesome. Great, where would you like that delivered? Please deliver them to the Gateway Pavilion in Fort Mason, and I'll be paying cash. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sweet. So just to confirm, you want 400 chocolate covered strawberries to the Gateway Pavilion? Yes, that's perfect. And when can we expect delivery? <laughs> uh, well, you guys are right nearby, so it'll be like, I don't know, 37 seconds? <laughs> <laughs> cool, you too. As you can see, this was very good and uh, it actually shows how you can deploy some agent to do some chores for you, uh, doing uh, some reservation or something like that. I also want to show you an important talk from Sam Altman which talks about different stages, five stage of uh, AI and uh, the current stage that we are in, which is reasoning, and what are the next step, which is the agent, and what are uh, the two other steps that we can expect to get to the uh, final version of an agent. Let's take a look at that together. We have these five levels of AI we talk about. Uh, the first was chatbots. The second, which we've just reached now, is reasoners. Uh, the third is agents. The fourth is sort of innovators, the ability to figure out new scientific information. And the fifth is full organizations. Um, so this move from one to two took a, a while, but I think the most exciting, one of the most exciting things about two is that it enables level three relatively quickly after. And 
the agentic experiences that we expect this technology to eventually enable, I think will be quite impactful. And there's different implementation of uh, these real-time APIs uh, that people are using, and there's one very famous one that's uh, got quite a lot of attention. So we can uh, put this and then uh, you can see how this person actually deployed uh, his voice uh, to do, uh, for example, an ordering. Let's take a look at that together as well website and order a black sheep sandwich. I'm on Suvla's website now. Let me look for the option to order a black sheep sandwich. I didn't find an option to order directly from the homepage. Let me check the navigation menu for a way to access the menu or place an order. I found the order online link in the navigation menu. Let me proceed to place an order for the black sheep so as you can see, all of this information were uh, kind of like the reasoning step. So we saw that from the uh, O1 model, uh, how we can uh, come up with the different stages uh, to uh, complete a, a higher level task. And then you can also see that whenever it doesn't have an information, it doesn't hallucinate, it will try to interact and have a human in the loop, which is actually very interesting. Sheep sandwich. We're now at the online ordering page for Suvla. It seems we need to find a nearby location to start the order. Could you please provide a city or zip code? Yeah, can you uh, pick the Hayes Valley location? I found the black added. Hey, actually, can you make that Greek style when you add it? The black sheet sandwich has been added to your cart with the Greek style modification. Would you like to proceed to check out? There's actually two of them. Can you remove one? <laughs> I've removed one of the black sheep sandwiches, leaving only one in your cart. Is there anything else you'd like to add or do before checking? Yeah, can you uh, just check out for me? You are now at the checkout page. Please review your order details and proceed with the payment information to complete your order. Yeah, can you just add a 10% tip and then place it? The 10% tip has been added, but it seems the order has not been placed yet. Let me try to place the order again. The order has been placed successfully. You should be all set for pickup. On the last part, I want to talk about NVIDIA agents and how they are actually using uh, this uh, technology in order to help us uh, to achieve it to a level that we can um, interact with uh, different agents. Let's take a look at uh, a talk from Jason. Using the scans you took of your current kitchen with your phone, they will be AI interior design helping generate beautiful photorealistic suggestions and sourcing the materials and furniture. We have generated several design options for you to choose from. They'll also be AI customer service agents, making the interaction more engaging and personalized, or digital healthcare workers who will check on patients, providing timely, personalized care. Um, I did forget to mention to the doctor that I am allergic to penicillin. Is it still okay to take the medications? The antibiotics you've been prescribed Ciprofloxacin and metronidazole don't contain penicillin, so it's perfectly safe for you to take them. And they'll even be AI brand ambassadors, setting the next marketing and advertising trends. Hi, I'm Ima, Japan's first virtual model. New breakthroughs in generative AI and computer graphics let digital humans see, understand, and interact with us in human-like ways. Hmm, from what I can see, it looks like you're in some kind of recording or production setup. The foundation of digital humans are AI models built on multilingual speech recognition and synthesis, and LLMs that understand and generate conversation. The AIs connect to another generative AI to dynamically animate a lifelike 3D mesh of a face. And finally, AI models that reproduce lifelike appearances, enabling real-time path-traced subsurface scattering to simulate the way light penetrates the skin, scatters, and exits at various points, giving skin its soft and translucent appearance. So you see, one important part was the image generation and image understanding or the perception part, and also obviously uh, the voice enabling. So the different modality uh, and the way that the uh, people actually get information, sense, and also communicate. So these AI agents are getting very good on this part. And obviously there would be enormous application in healthcare, gaming, advertisement, and so on. And they can actually uh, generate very good results um, and then maybe they can use it and, and be deployed uh, with a lot of ROI for uh, different companies. And there you have it guys, we're going to talk over different applications of AI agents, how it's going to shape our future, what are the different cases, and uh, should we worried, should we not worry? Let me in the comments if you are really excited about this future of having different AI agents to work for us, or are you a little bit skeptic and uh, you are a little bit scared from this situation, you're not sure uh, about what kind of possibility can happen. Thanks for watching until the end of the video. If you 
you enjoyed make sure to like the video and more importantly subscribe to the channel so you get more information about these topics if you are interested in more videos like this make sure to watch this video that i created before i talked about the o1 model which is actually the one the new model of OpenAI, which do the reasoning and then you will uh, get to know how we get to the uh, agentic ai also i created a lot of content about video generation you can see that this one from meta movie gen that's a kind of revolutionized the whole uh, video industry and thanks for watching and see you until the next one